Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if it's possible to actually pick yourself up. So this question is so stupid that it's actually interesting. Have you ever thought about it? Why is it so impossible to just lift yourself up? Why can't you do it? So for example, I'm sitting in this chair here. Now let me try to pick myself up. Ugh. Heavier than I thought. Ugh. Ugh. So why can't I pick myself up? I mean, I don't weigh that much. So I should be strong enough to lift somebody my size. So let me get a scale and see how much I actually weigh as I'm picking myself up. Okay, so you can see I weigh around 160 pounds now. But let me try to pick myself up on this chair. So I grab the chair and start to lift. Notice how right when I start to lift, it goes to 180 pounds. So now I suddenly weigh 180 pounds. Now 200, 220, 240, 280, 300 pounds. Oh, 320, 340. So I definitely can't pick up a 340 pound person. So it seems that the harder I try to lift myself up, the more I weigh. Well, that's because I was on a chair, right? So I was trying to pick up the chair and in picking up the chair, I made myself weigh more. And the more I weighed, the more I had to pick up and the more I had to pick up, it made me weigh more. So now let's see if I can pick myself up just standing here. So to start off, I'm gonna start off by trying to pick up one leg. So if I kept my weight evenly distributed, I'd be trying to pick up around 80 pounds. But that's not what happens. As soon as I pick up this leg, now suddenly I can see that this leg doesn't only weigh 80 pounds now. Now suddenly it's still supporting 160 pounds. So now if I wanna pick up this leg, I don't just have to pick up only 80 pounds, but I have to pick up a 160 pound leg. So let's say instead of picking up the whole leg, I'm just gonna pick up the back of my foot. But now as I pick up the back of my foot, I still weigh 160 pounds. And all of that weight was just distributed on the front of my foot. So now this tiny little area still weighs 160 pounds. Have you ever tried to pick up something that's that big that weighs 160 pounds? But now the more that leaves the ground, the more weight is on a smaller area. And so no matter what I do, I try to pick up more and the more that little piece that's still on the ground weighs per area. And so in trying to pick myself up, all I was able to do is concentrate the whole weight of my body to a smaller and smaller area. So no surprises here now. I wasn't able to pick myself up off the chair and I wasn't able to pick myself up off of the floor. Well then how come I can do this? So somehow both of the things that I just mentioned in both of these methods of trying to pick myself up suddenly didn't apply when I jumped. I'm leaving the ground. But you may think that's stupid, you're jumping. But so what? Why is jumping different? How does jumping make you suddenly just lift off the ground? Well, let's look at the scale and see what's happening when we're jumping. Okay, so back on the scale, you can see I weigh 160 pounds. But what's interesting is that I don't always weigh 160 pounds. So the thing to notice here is that when I move down, I weigh less. So notice right when I start to accelerate downwards, my weight goes really far down. But then when I stop myself, then my weight goes up. So you can see that I can change my weight on the scale just by moving where the center of mass of my body is. So the real reason that I left the ground when I jumped is not because I was lifting myself up, but because the ground pushed me off the ground. Let me show you what I mean. So I normally weigh 160 pounds, but watch what happens when I jump. Look at the weight. So suddenly the scale pushed on me with 320 pounds force and that's way more than I weigh and so that caused me to accelerate upwards. So I weigh 160 pounds but the scale's pushing up on me with 320 pounds so that causes me to go flying up in the air. 
So you can see that jumping isn't really levitating because what happened there is you pushed down on the ground with a greater force than your body weighs and that caused the ground to push on you with that great force greater than what you weigh and so that causes you to pop up in the air. But you don't always leave the ground when you push on the ground harder than you weigh. If that were the case then you'd always be popping off of the ground whenever you took a step or changed anything about your center of mass. If I just went down a little bit and then moved up, I'd pop off the ground. And the reason I don't leave the ground whenever it goes above my weight is because I'm not a rigid body. If I were perfectly rigid, then I would pop off the ground whenever I pushed on the ground more than I weighed. But I'm non-rigid, which means my body can deform slightly. I can stretch out my toes to stay on the ground, even though the weight is pushing me off the ground more than I weigh. But is it actually possible to leave the ground without pushing down with more weight than you weigh? Well, the answer is yes, but it's a little bit harder. Let me show you how to do it. So basically what you need to do in this case is to be able to just lift your legs up and not jump. And it's really hard to get yourself to do it. So you're just standing there and you're just gonna suddenly pull up your legs. And of course, as soon as you pull up your legs, your body's gonna start falling. But the goal is to try to let your feet leave the ground without increasing your weight. Okay, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> so you can see that my feet actually left the ground without increasing the weight on the scale. So that means that I didn't jump. So I was able to leave the ground without jumping. And the way that was able to happen is basically my body pulled my legs up as it was falling. So really that's just a creative way of falling. So technically I was able to actually pick myself up off the ground. But the problem is my body that was picking myself up was actually falling in the meantime. Another way you could levitate or lift yourself up off the ground is to throw mass the opposite way. So if you had a bunch of mass and you were to suddenly throw it downward, you would move upward. In fact, if you were to keep doing that, you would continue to move upward. So if you were able to throw enough stuff downward, then you would continue to move upward. In fact, you don't even have to be holding that stuff. You could just use air. So if you were able to grab the air and throw it down and keep grabbing the air and throw it down, you could move upward. In fact, that's exactly how drones, helicopters, and planes fly, is they're continually grabbing the air and throwing it downward, and that pushes them upward. And I showed this in a previous video where you can see the weight of the scale stays the same when a drone hovers above it because it's throwing its equivalent weight of air downward. And that's also the same way that rockets work except rockets don't grab the air around them and throw it down. But what they do is grab the gas that's inside of their rocket booster and they throw that gas downward really fast. And the harder they throw it, the faster it'll push them upward. And so that's why planes and drones and helicopters need air because they have to grab that air around them and throw it down. But rockets don't need air to push off of. They just use their own internal gas and throw it away that way. And it pushes them the other way. What we're really looking for here in order to pick yourself up is some anti-gravity technology. And by anti-gravity, I don't just mean like electrostatic repulsion or magnetic repulsion or buoyancy. I mean actually anti-gravity. Is that even possible? So because in the theory of general relativity, gravity isn't actually a force, but it's actually just the bending of space-time. And so basically gravity is kind of this well that forms when there's a mass there. So in order to have something that is anti-gravity, that means that instead of a well when there's a mass there, we'd have to have something that bent it the opposite way. So if a mass bends space-time like that, then we need something that's kind of the opposite of the mass. How about something called a negative mass? Now I did an entire video before dedicated to what a negative mass means. Now negative mass is purely theoretical at this point, but we're not quite sure if it exists or not. If it does exist, then it means it would bend space-time the opposite way like this, which means that it would repel, it would cause you to float. So the only way to produce anti-gravity is to have something that has a negative mass. Now because mass and energy are equivalent according to this equation, that means that negative mass means there can also be negative energy. So the only way to have anti-gravity is to have some large body of negative mass and you be a positive mass on that negative mass. 
So you would accelerate away from this negative mass. Whereas actually this negative mass would be attracted to you and pull upward. And that's because the gravitational force is repulsive, so the negative mass responds by accelerating in the opposite direction of the force. The concept of negative mass is actually really interesting. What happens if you have two massive bodies, one positive mass, one negative mass, they actually end up chasing each other. One flies one way and the other one chases it, continually accelerating faster and faster, while the net energy is actually zero. So I'll put a link in my description to this YouTube video that somebody made showing the different effects when you have positive mass and negative mass and what happens and how they can actually be stably um, orbiting each other. It's a really interesting video. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video is out. And head over to theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.